difficult, complex components that require high surface finishes, so something that necessarily you're not going to be able to hand polish and still hold the form. Connor, something new from Solitech here at Mac 2024, a machining centre, a high-speed machining centre. That's it. it. So, uh, yeah, UK launch of the UX450. Um, as you know, we're very well known for EDM, mm. but not necessarily high-speed machining. So, How do the two work together? They do. They, they work very well. So from electrode manufacturer, for example, you know, this is a perfect machine, graphite or copper. Um, but really, you know, if you go for like a hard milling process, so some applications where, you know, sparking isn't necessarily necessary, for example, we could do hard milling. So something like a Stavax component, we could easily hold very high surface finish, high tolerance, uh, mirror finishes, all and that sort of that stuff. And you do that by, obviously the construction, the way this machine yep. is built, it's got that bridge element to it. Correct. But also very high speed spindle, high speed movements. Yeah, so we're 40,000 on the spindle, um, so it's very high speed spindle. And then with the axis movements, you know, what we're known for is them linear motors, that sort of key and core to our business, and have been very successful for us for over 20 years what, why now. Why is a linear motor it's, so much more? How, just um, kind of describe the it's, reasons it's why. It's because you can, you can move that axis around, you can start and stop it very quickly. So, in terms of getting something up to full speed and stopping with a linear motor, you know, we can do that. You're not, you haven't got a ball screw there that's, that's trying to push There's a heavy lots axis. Lots of small movements moving yeah, in around. Lots of small movements backwards and forwards. As you can see with this particular component here, you know, it's silky smooth movement. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the two things I look at with this machine, accuracy and surface finish, what can you, um, what parts can you do on here that eliminate processes from other machines? So, types? you know, difficult, complex components that require high surface finishes so something that necessarily you're not going to be able to hand polish and still hold the form this is where this machine is absolutely perfect again what could um, that be what sort of application would it you can associate be, with yeah that? mold tool making so you know we've got a couple of examples around like a sort of a, a tail lamp reflector lots of um sort of flats and, and sharp polishing edges. can be a timely process yeah, it is you it? know and it's a, it's a skill process that really nowadays you know we're it's an ever-changing world and we're losing those skills, so really you need machines there that, that are able to do it. And the accuracy as well. That's it. Something so really tight tolerance, what could that real be? Real high tolerances, you know, jig grinding applications, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's also a skill that's, you know, unfortunately I think as the years go on it's going to be lost, but, you know, with, with CNC, with this machine, this is something we can do. I look at a lot of vertical machining centres, five-axis machines, and there's often a very familiar theme with the control systems. Yours is different here. It is, yeah. So we've is that all good or bad? It's good. I would say it's good. So with any Sodic product, we've got our own sort of PLC on the front end. So it's a Sodic controller. In terms of programming, you know, while well, you say power mill, and um, you know, other CAD systems are available that you can use. But yeah, so it's full conversational programming. And then with this machine in particular, we've just changed our tool measurement method slightly. So traditionally, we used to use a laser. Problem is with a spot diameter on the laser, you're sort of limited to the, the diameter of cutting tool you can go down to. When you use an optical system, you know, we could use a, a 0.1 cutting tool without a problem and still be able to measure it within a couple of microns. And you're using a camera though or something here, aren't you? Yeah, we are. So the, the camera that we have will check not only the form of the cutter, it will also check the run out as well. So these shrink fit holders are good for, you know, two microns, but we can counteract that by using the camera system. Um, when it comes to uh, the co kind of competition in this field, like I said earlier, lots of vertical machining centers, but this isn't really this, in amongst this that isn't, field, is it? Yeah, no, this, it stands this, almost unique in, in an area. It's not your run-of-the-mill sort of machining center, so this is the very top, you know, top tier of the pyramid, so we're talking high-end medical applications, high-end molding applications and, and such the like, so really, if you've got the work for it, this is a perfect machine.